Hey there YouTube, so here's another design with me, because I don't know what to do with my hands. Kayla's here, she's hey doing guys. orders. And uh, so we are going to be designing some more wintry things. Also, preface, preface, I don't know, that's a word you read in silent most of the time, so I actually don't know how to say that. Preface? Preface? I want to preface this by saying. I'm going to preface this. Anyways, before I get started, um... We're designing stuff that will be coming out soon, Suspe uh, specifically maybe for a subscription. So if you don't want to ruin anything for yourself, get out of here until December's over. I'm making some fireplaces today. Come on. So let's swap. Look at me. I'm in the little bottom left corner. All right, guys. So we're going to design a fireplace. So this is to go for the baby. It's cold outside. And that's going to be uh, a subscription box that we designed, if you guys don't know, which I don't know how you wouldn't, uh, that's coming out for the December months, and it's all about, like, winter activities. It's super cool. I'm actually really excited for it. Uh, I'll give you a couple sneak peeks. Here's a bear in an ugly Christmas sweater. Uh, here's an owl that will actually won't look like this. I made him into a snowy owl. So... There you go. Little sneak peeks before. So we're going to make a fire. I already have some made from a camping set um, as far as the flame goes, but I will show you how I did that anyways. And we're going to start here. Um, I've got my color palettes, and what that means to me, or should mean, is that I went through and I picked like a selection of colors and that worked together. Um, some people recommended using cooler, K-U-L-E-R, um, which is really cool because you can... <laughs> Can, you can make your own through Adobe, but what I prefer is I go to Color Lovers, and that's Color Lovers, um, and just typing in a, a set and, and seeing what they have and using that as inspiration. Uh, and they have a great book, Color Inspirations, and I really like the book. I know I preach this a lot. It's right here above me because that's how serious I am about this. Um, and it comes with a little CD. And what it does is you can actually see in print what the colors look like and why is that important because your computer screen and the printers are different so although you might think something looks good on the computers it doesn't in real life like white and yellow and that is my text messages so let's get started with this fireplace so I'm thinking something regal so let's get started with some columns so I'm using the box tool and I'm, uh, I'm just going to eyeball this entire thing. So we've got a box. And we're going to take the, direct, or the selection tool, which is B as a shortcut. And we're going to copy it and drag it over just so I can kind of start get spacing. But I probably won't actually use this one on the right because I have some things I want to do to my box. Oh my gosh, where did it go? There it's back. I don't know how I did that. So, so let's zoom in to here and uh, we'll do so these are left and right of the fireplace and then we're going to give it a little we're going to make the fire actually a little back sorry what i just like grab things so we're going to put the fireplace in the back a little and that's going to give it some dimension which is i believe spanish for dimension uh, and then we're going to do this circle. What's cool is, because we already have the width laid out, I can kind of give it a nice half arch. I think that's a... I know that doesn't look like a fireplace. It looks like I'm trying to make some new age things, but watch this. Select both shapes and then use Pathfinder, which is here, often found underneath the Pathfinding tab. And I'm going to unite, uh, which is going to merge the two shapes together, and bam, we've got the beginning of a like we hurt, you know, that thing. Uh, which then we could throw some flames in and things like that. But let's get back to these columns because they're not sexy enough. Oh no, I have a dead pixel, which you guys can't see, but it's on my screen and it's dead. Um, That's like the worst. Oop, no, just a drop of ink from just, a pen. Just I lied. It was dried ink. Don't worry about it. I was worried. <laughs> I was too because I'm like, this is my baby, and that's a huge dead pixel. Okay, so we're obviously using the winter color palettes, but fire can't play nicely with that, so we'll ignore that. Um, what about 
a good column has those little like these things. So what we're going to do is again click and holding alt will make a duplicate and holding shift will let you move only on the same horizontal or vertical or 45 degree axis. See how like I obviously I'm not that perfect at moving. Um, so we're going to do that so they're all the same level. Alt so that again alt click shift and you've got that. And now they look horrible because there's no spacing. But don't sweat it, guys. Select all three. Uh, select the left and right. Put them where you want them to be. Like, make sure the spacing between left and right is good. And you'll see why, because when you select all three, uh, you can align them vertical aligned. So when you align, oh, that's not what you want. When you align them vertically, what that's going to do is that's going to um, put the middle and just put them in a straight line. So there's, it's not doing what's called distributing, which took me forever to figure out. Because if you look at this top area, it's like this is the same exact symbol as this. What the heck? And what you realize is this is horizontal distribute, meaning what it's going to do is it's going to take the left and the right item and evenly space things between them uh, which for someone who likes to eyeball things like I do uh, is a godsend because then I can be like ah, I don't like that spacing maybe put that over one click put that over one two clicks and now even though I didn't do it with the spacing like I didn't space it automatically I know that by doing two clicks in they're even so we've got that on the left side. Let's go ahead and give us a rounded top. So we're going to select the rounded rectangle tool and we're going to build a top of our uh, little cylinder. This might this is getting a little away from a this is getting a fancy fireplace is what we're doing here. So now we've got this top something uh, probably because I already have this set up but to help you guys when you're drawing a shape you see these rounded corners use the up arrow and you can make it more rounded. Use the down arrow and it will make it less rounded. That's a square. Now it's rounded corners. So when you're moving shapes and you're like, ah, I need it to be more rounded, how do I do this? Uh, this is how. So as long as you're still holding, you can use the up and down arrows. And that holds true for a few different items in this world. And to do this, where I'm moving it around but still actively being able to adjust it, that's the space bar, my friends. That's the space bar. Not the one in Star Wars with the good music. Alright, so I think that's a pretty honky dory top. And again, you can always take your selection tool, which again, don't forget, is B, and you can adjust it. So I think that's, let's not get too ostentatious. Uh, we want to give it a fill because we don't want those lines coming through, so I'm just going to do white for now just to keep it simple. And there you go. Now what we can do is select, and I'm using shift to select more than one item. We can group them together. So now this is going to act as an, a single entity. And the reason why that's important is you can select this and this and line them up center, which it didn't do anything because I have a really good apparently eyeballing job. But bam, centers them up. And then we can, now that it's centered, and we can you hold the shift to, again, move up and down uh, on the plane and get it, bam, that's perfect. Right click, group it. Now we've got another grouping. And we can move that over. And now you can see why I probably won't be using this. This is just more for the one on the right. I mean, um, just because I want to do all this cool design stuff over here, dupe it and throw it over here. Okay, so we've got the beginning of a column. Um, it's kind of hard on the eyes because you got the white and blue repeating. Uh, let's go ahead and, so I'll, I'll have to figure something out there. Let's go ahead and give us a hearth, something people can put things on. Um, yeah, okay. I wanted to see if I'd like it with square or if I wanted a rounded option. I do like the square. It seems, seems right. Uh, so same thing, just take these two items, center them up, and that's going to put this center dot with the center dot from this shape, and then this one we can just adjust accordingly, 
and then at the end I'm going to uh, center it all, but again, this is just kind of to get things going, so we're making this sweet, sweet fireplace. Okay, so I don't know what to do with these columns, or do we need to, you know, ah, I forgot to group the whole thing. So if you're dealing with a group and you don't want to ungroup it, you can use the direct select tool, which will only select the element at hand and let you treat it as though you didn't group it, which is nice, but sometimes it does stuff like this. So you gotta be a little careful. Um, ah! It did the jumpy thing. I don't know why it's doing that. But it also keeps it a part of that group, even though we uh, selected it from there. So just, you know, things to think about. You might have to ungroup it anyways, but if you're working with an element inside of itself, it's all pretty good. Uh, so to be honest, I'm going to just... Ah, it's annoying. It's a very efficient tool, but also very an annoying tool. Okay. No! Stop it! Stop doing that thing! Another way, if you want to do it, is you can double click, and what that will do is it will highlight the element and make the background go great. And you can treat things in the group again. The reason why I went back is because I wanted to make sure everything was aligned and I'm lazy and I didn't feel like I'm grouping it. So I'm just holding down shift, duplicating it, and seeing how that looks, which I think that looks really good. Um, so I am going to give it a footer. Um, let's see, what else? What else? We're going to have some sweet shadows on this guy. I think the hearth should actually touch. Yeah, that looks good. And I want this to actually come down a little. Does that look good? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Keep it a little above. So we've got that. Maybe come in here. Give that a, a color, background color. One of these looking things. Looks like one of those hotels you go to that everything's made of ice. She's as cold as ice. Oh my god. Did you guys hear that? That was me and Kayla singing in unison a song that we both had not previously planned. This happens a lot, but that's on film. It's like a UFO. This is why we're getting paid. That is one of the reasons. This is the only reason. We actually don't. It's our ability to break into song at the same moment. Um, okay, so I'm starting. Yeah, this is definitely looking good. Um, do I want to do that? This is, what about some grays? Bring some grays in there? Ooh. Get some grays! Shh, Kayla, this is my video. How dare you? Grind is gray? Grind is gray? Um, we can worry about color later. But for now, that's what we got. So, that has actually made the columns look pretty good. So, I like that. Okay, so let's work on these flames. Ready? Just copy and paste. That's all you needed to do. <laughs> Kayla, you can't laugh. They're laughing at home. Now they're confused. Well, how are they supposed to make flames if you've already made them? That's perfect. Look at these awesome flames. This is a roaring fire. You did so great, guys. You guys, yeah. look how awesome you're doing this flames. So, yeah, um, we can definitely throw some flames in here, but I actually don't like this. Well, I mean, I totally do like it. I made it, but I will, I will, for the sake of this video, make more. Um... First thing, let's actually make a fire rack. For those of you who don't know, when you have fire in your house, you need a little metal tray to hold it up so oxygen can get in. Um, if I talk too much, mute me and just watch. Also. Pro tip. Pro, pro tip for Alex. I talk a lot. I talk through everything, and I goof around a whole bunch. So if I annoy you, just... Just do that. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Why does that not look correct? There we go. Uh, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to set the setting. I don't know. I don't know. I can't just throw a fire in there. That'd be ridiculous. Well, let's let's make the thing first. So yeah, we're gonna make our fire holder. Uh, which we will do a crossbar because that's what they look like. We'll make it this color. Woo, we have a new order. Yay. They can totally see. Oh, you can't see that because it's behind my head. Ha! Ha ha! I thought I ruined it. But yes, uh, we just got a new order. But you can't see that because it's, again, behind me right here. Okay, so we got that. Bam. Flame bar. Not impressive yet. Bam, pen tool again. 
Uh, let's give it some of those like rungs so it doesn't, you know, do the whole fall out of the fireplace with the wood thing. Um, because you want your stickers to be as realistic and true to shape as possible. Don't give me any of that shenanigans. You don't want those sticker fires burning up the planner. I'm glad. I'm glad you understand. Hey, happy trees. That's what this is. That's what. The, oh my gosh! I made a terrible mistake. Okay, Alt, Drag, Dupe, and because uh, I'm lazy, Control D will just replicate the last thing you did in Illustrator. So since this is another way to get really great spacing, uh, is just go ahead and move it once, and then Control D, and it would just go forever. Um, but you don't need it to do that. So Control Z is how you undo. Um, Normally, I would spend time and make them like the center straight and then bend them out sideways, but I actually think this is going to get the point across. So now we need to give, now we've got our little flame bar. We need to give it some legs so it can hold up on its own. Kind of like little feet. You might not, not actually need that. Um, like We are getting a little detailed. But that's just how we do. So I'm going to reflect this because I like everything to look very similar. Um, and I'm going to show you another trick on spacing. So remember, this is going to be a sticker, so honestly, this wouldn't matter. But this is really good if you're designing things, especially like eyeballs, where you want them to be centered and you can't like just tell Illustrator, hey, I'm making eyeballs, make this the center, go off of it. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I'm just not smart enough, so this is my workaround. Select two items um, at an appropriate distance from one another. So that's an appropriate distance for me. Um, group them. Eh, you like that, don't you? Now we're going to group all these and the bottom bar. And we're going to make that an object. And then we are going to select them. So now, even though we have like, a, like 10 little objects here, it's only thinking there's two objects and we're going to center adjust them. So now these are evenly spaced because they were grouped together and put in the middle of this object. So eyeballs and a head, now it would be evenly spaced right in the middle of the face. So that was my trick. There you go. That's the most useful thing you'll get out of this whole video. And the fact I like talking. Alright, I was going to use the line tool but I realized I hate the line tool because um, it's just the pen tool without as much features. So I'm going to put a bar there, but it's not a bar. What is it? I'll tell you. It's a log. Boom. Um, dark brown's fun, but because it's a dark color there, it's actually going to make it really hard to tell that it's a log. So we're going to take it, and we're going to make it a super thick line. So thick. Look how thick that is. Super thick. Um, and now remember in Illustrator everything is on glass. You're working on layers of glass or layers like onions. So I'm going to use control left bracket and push it behind our little log friend there. And uh, that doesn't look so much log like, does it now? What does I think it mean? You think that looks log like? It's going to be tiny. You know, I don't, Kayla. This is why I do the design with me. Oh. All right. And bring it over there. Let's not talk about that igloo. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like that. So let's give it some wicked awesome flames. So there's a few different ways to do flames. Um, you've seen one here. Ta-da! Which is your hokey campfire. Which again... I could just copy, and there is no copy button. I hate this in Illustrator. That I can't just right-click copy. So Control C. Um, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, I'm on a PC, and if you use a Mac, I don't care. Figure it out. It's Command something or whatever. Same thing, same thing. Um, it's just Command. So just make the proper adjustments, and I could do that, and ta-da, we've got a fireplace. But so how I did this one is I took the pen tool. And I started in the bottom middle because I like to start at the round point. And I hold shift and I go and I click, make my point, and then drag out. And what that does is it makes this point uh, a bendy point, which is the technical term for it. 
Um, and what that means is, see how it kind of comes out on a line rather than going directly to it like these are. So I'm just clicking these points in its straight line, no bend. But by clicking and then dragging, it's now a bendy point. So, as I think you've caught on, that's how you make your fire. So if we're going to make this fire over here for a campfire, come out, and again, you can hold the shift button to move that point around, um, which is super useful. Bring it up, come up here, give it some, you know, slender, sexy curves. Uh, and then now, if you wanted to come back, it would just look weird because it's around the top. So how do you fix that? Hold down the Alt button while using the pen tool, and you will get this little diamond thing, right angle. It's a cute angle. Ha! Ah. Um, and you can click and adjust independently the left and right side of the point, meaning you can now have a sharp point there, like that. See how it's sharp? So sharp. Very sharp. Much sharpness. Um, and then what you would do is you would take the flame and continue on doing that back and forth uh, until you got something you wanted. If you wanted something a little more wiggly, you could just kind of go crazy like that. And you'll kind of just keep doing that. Um, the reason why I'm just ignoring this is I wanted to try something else. So taking the pen tool, we can just draw one lick of flame, which is actually, I think that's actually what it's called. Uh, nope. We don't want it to join the fire resting thing. So we've got one thing of flame. I'm going to select it. And we're going to give it a color on the stroke there. I think I'm not going to like this the way this looks. I'm probably going to go with this method, which is outline the fire. Um, but I want to just give you some options. Make the stroke thicker. So now you've got like this heavy thickness. And what's cool is you can come over here and mess with the stylings of this stroke. So maybe that looks really cool. Maybe you're going to make a fire for like some fancy restaurant that grills outside. This is probably what they use in their pond because that looks like that looks like a definite flame. And again, you know, duplicate it a few times. Uh, sometimes just spin it upside down get some different looks going on, uh, layer it, make smaller ones, make bigger ones, change the color from dark orange to light orange, and you can get uh, some different stuff. You can mess with the thickness of it, so let's go ahead and we'll take this styling back to regular, um, and you can mix with the shape, so you know here you got like this hourglass shape, and you can make it like that. If you want to customize and you're not happy with any of this nonsense up here, get out. Uh, you can come up here and holding the alt button you can switch between the different tools that exist for these things. Ah, I just went by it. Dang it. Come back. This one, this with tool, shift W, which I didn't know that, will let you come onto a line and adjust the widths of lines. Like, I want a point here, so I'm going to zoom in so you guys can get a little more flavor. Uh, but I can be like, I want this to be really wide here. And uh, you know what? I want it to be thinner here. There's no point. Just click on the line. It will add a point for you. Uh, and this is how you can get some real funky shapes going on. Uh, and what's cool is it's balanced. And it follows the initial curve. Uh, so very useful tool. Not in this scenario. Um, the biggest issue I have with this is that where you're going for like a coloring book look I guess you could say with this so you've got the heavy the darker outline shapes um, so this flame just doesn't fit it's I'm sure it's a great flame in other areas but it just I'm not not in love so since I've showed you what I've done I'm going to just go ahead and go with their original one here and the log is on fire here and we want to push it back so that's the control left bracket and we're going to copy this a few times and give the log just, you know, a little bit, a little bit of something, something. We're going to go ahead and Pathfinder merge that. Now it's all one shape. We're going to dupe it. So Alt drag, transform, reflect. Okay, so now we got these, you know, a little bit of 
a little bit, it would mess with the sizing a little. Kind of put it back here. And I know that looks like a lot of flame, but that's because we're going to shift colors, not the outside. And we'll put that behind it. So now we're getting a little bit, yeah, you guys see it coming along. I know you do. At home, you guys all went like, what? Or wherever you're watching me in the world. And I'm going to take this little guy, and we can put him up front, maybe change his color, I don't know, who knows, I keep doing that. I'm changing the stroke, not the fill. So now when I go to do it, it should change the color a little more. Ooh. Like 12 different yeah, I just, I do, I just ramble on my own here. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that. That's nice. That's a nice flame. Whoop, too far back. Don't want to keep it, you don't want it to be too obvious that you're just being lazy and re repeating, which you can kind of start feeling in the back. Um, but you know, you do you. So I'm, I, I like it. I think it gives it a very, like, unbalanced, balanced look, especially with all the peaks looking very similar. Um, especially since this little flame is the larger flame. But what I didn't tell you is once you put these all together like this, and you put them there and there, and you've got these layers of flames, take your direct select tool and then just start adjusting your points. So now we've got this base kind of shape, whoop, now I'm going to move the whole thing, and you can adjust the points so you don't get that, you know, copy, paste, clone looking stamp tool, you can make some of the flames a little different, uh, spread it out, obviously this, you can see the, flame, the curve is coming in way higher than where the wood actually is, so bring that down so it kind of encapsulates the one behind it, uh, fire is crazy man, so you don't really have to get two on it. Um, this shape is weird. I don't even like that point there, so we're just going to remove it. I reject you. Go ahead and hold Alt and let you uh, interact with them individually. Maybe make this look a little bigger. Bring this one out. Again, holding the Alt button will let you give it a point. Do some of that. Do a little bit of that. Look at that. Get a little more flame. Flame out! Alright, that's a pretty healthy looking fire. That's a roaring fire. One worthy of a winter's night. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm vibing it. Can you dig it? Ah, it keeps moving it. Select your points before you move stuff around there, kiddos. I like the sharp pointy fire, it makes it look like you don't want to touch it. You might actually just take that. There we go. Drop it in the back, give it a little more flame, give it maybe another layer of orange. Because hey, we're crazy. Ooh, maybe some of the ball color oranges from the previous. There, there we go. Use that tool. Select this guy. So it's all about layers. That's the the thing I think that I've realized that really makes design uh, that separates you know the babies from the big boys is that granted that's a ripping fire now. Uh, it's it's do going. It's very simple things, but doing a lot of simple things is what makes a very complex design. Um, and I think that's awesome. So now we've got this sweet fire. Uh, it fills the space nicely. We're going to have to do some coloring in the background. Obviously, it's not going to be burning in a white hearth. So we need to give it a uh, horizon line, um, which is not the correct term in this scenario, but it could work in the background. 
where the ground goes and meets the wall and then goes up. Sorry. Look at Kayla just interrupted me. Crash, boom, bang. People need their stickers. So I'm going to select this. And so instead of trying to match this shape and filling it perfectly, I'm just going to use this, which is draw inside. Meaning, when I go to make shapes, you can see that. But ah, look, it doesn't go outside of that shape. Um, as you can see with these little marching ant lines, uh, well, I guess they're not marching, so they're just dash lines. If they move, they're called marching ants, by the way. Um, and that's a real thing, scientifically proven. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put right from here to here, once I see you go outside, uh, that's going to be the floor. Give a nice dark shade, bring it to the back all the way. Um, Maybe a red. Red doesn't seem nice. Where did our log go? The log is gone. I don't like that. Where's my log? It burned up. It burned up. You're roaring uh, fire. Now see, this is the problem with dark colors and dark colors. We're gonna stick with our grays then. We're gonna make it a gray floor, a darkish gray floor. Perfect. And we're gonna get rid of that blue line stroke. That's that's silly. There's none of that in the fireplace. There we go. So we've got a nice back thing going on. So this whole thing is actually in front of the fire, but not in front? I don't know. I want it in the back. So there we go. Chiching. Thank you guys. I love you. So we're going to do the same exact thing, um, but for the top now, because the top needs to be a different color, because obviously flames would have not kept things white. And dear God, who would put a white background in a fireplace? So again, we're going to select by double clicking um, and just keep clicking on it until this pops back up. I don't know why it makes you do that, but it does. So just keep clicking on the object until it gets pulled back out to that. I'm going to use this tool this time. Line it up. Now it's selected. This tool being the square tool. Using a slightly darker color to signify that it's the back which would receive less light, even though the light flame is coming from in there. Um, and bam, we've got ourselves a dope little fireplace. Uh, I don't like how this line matches up with the log. It kind of looks bad. So I'm going to move the whole thing down. And maybe put it there. Same thing with this, obviously. There's no white gaps. That looks good. Go back. There we go. That looks good delete this. Since this is all grouped as we talked about earlier, we can move it there. Um, so, okay, it was Le Fin. Um, well, there's always more, but I'm done with that group. But there you go. Kayla, how do you feel about that fireplace? I think that fireplace needs something. Best I've ever seen. What does it need? A bunch of stuff from Germany around it. Yeah, I feel like it needs a little, well, okay. <laughs> That's my home. Has His a, parents' house has, has like a fireplace. The most epic fireplace you've ever seen. And yeah, it's got layers and shelves. And <laughs> I think it looks great. Is it cool? I think maybe put like a tiny Christmas tree on top, like kind of decorate it like it's a holiday. Well, I don't. I don't want to get too holiday. It's gonna, like more like wintry. I allow it. Okay, so we're done. So again, file. Save as. I know I didn't open this file for you, but I save in a 10 by 10, 10 inch by 10 inch workspace. Okay, so winter animal and shirts. Haha, <laughs> you see some of the names, but you can't see the images. Um, we're going to save this as fireplace because these are going to be a part of that set. Thank you guys for watching. That's my design with me this week. We made a fireplace and we did it in a really, really long time. I'm so sorry about that. And I've rambled a lot, but that is design. I'm not, these aren't really uh, pre-planned. I haven't done these before, so I actually just kind of figure it out. Again, I am by no means an expert. I taught myself all of this within a year. Um, I could say I'm an expert in Photoshop, but Illustrator, not so much. Uh, so if you know a better way to do things or know about tools that exist, please share with the class. And I will highlight you in the next week's video of what tool that was and uh, who you are and who suggested that. I forgot who suggested Cooler. I think a few people offered Cooler up last week. 
Um, yeah, and if you know a better way to do things, let me know. If you want to know anything, I will scrounge the internet and find a way to make uh, to answer your question in the next video as well, because I like learning as a team, and that's what I feel like these are. So, best of luck. Thanks for watching. Cool. Yeah, it took a while.